Welcome to Better Golf, I'm Paul Dyer. And I'm Ian Holloway. Ian, pitching, I think first of all, before we even get down to pitching technique and so forth, let's get one thing straight that's been bugging us for a long time. Yeah. Chipping and pitching, what's the difference? It really is just a definition thing. A chip is basically a, a ball that rolls more than it's in the air, and a pitch is something that is more in the air than it rolls. And none that, of those two things That is it to, to do, do with technique. Right. Absolutely nothing. And I think the rule is, if you want a ball to fly further, what can you do? Well, you swing it back a bit further. Okay. And if you want more loft? I've got my 58 degree Callaway wedge. And if you want to hit it lower? Uh, I've got a 52 over there. So we can just change the club to vary the loft and then change the swing to change the distance the ball flies. And it, I don't like this chip and pitch and having two techniques because then you, what do you do when it's not a chip and not a pitch? Is that a trip? I don't really know. What was that word again? A trip. <laughs> so absolutely, I see so many people, you know, chipping and, and, and the problem is, is that chipping sort of becomes this uh, Very single, static. Year. Yeah, exactly. And then suddenly there's a magic line on the fairway about 30 yards from the green where, you know, you've almost got a full swing, you know, mm. which is crazy because the whole idea of golf is to become variable, right? Exactly. So what we're going to talk about today is the basics of pitching. So what are the basics of pitching, Paul? Well, really there's only one basic and that is controlling the distance. Okay. And controlling the distance is easy in chipping. No one asks how to control the distance in chipping because mm -hmm. everybody knows yeah. if you swing back a bit further, well, the ball flies a bit further. Yeah. And here it's no different, right? Exactly. I think there's this, there's this grey area. Is it the speed of the body or is it well, the length of the swing? It's been it said in certain golf books, you know, the, the old... Um, you know, tachometer in the, in the middle of the body and so forth. And that might be something for really good players. Yeah. But to be honest, before you even get anywhere near that, mm -hmm. let's just talk about different swing lengths. lengths of swing. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if we can talk about maybe three lengths of, of backswing that we, that we like to look at with the average player. So why don't you go ahead and set up, Paul? So the three that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the V position. This is where the... The hands are around about thigh height and the club is around about shoulder height. This is one. The second is going to be where the left arm is parallel to the ground. And the third one is going to be where the left arm is going to go to around about 10 o'clock. Now, if you've got three wedges and three different pitching distances, swing length, then we've got nine different distances. And if we use three different wedges, then obviously you're going to get three different ball flights as well. So just with the, just understanding the swing length, you can really produce different and variable shots. Yeah, and I think you know actually having nine different distances, even though it maybe doesn't quite work like that in practice, exactly. but even so, imagine being able to pitch it nine different distances at will. It's amazing. There's more than that's more than a lot of the really good players that we work with. Exactly. So you need to really dial in and think about how far you're swinging back. But remember, it's not an exact science. It's not, I need to get the, the club into this position. It's more, okay, right, so this length of shot, okay, let me feel that. How far is that? And as long as you're engaging yourself into the target and how far that is and maximizing that through the swing length, then you're really going to produce better, better and more consistent shots, really. Okay, so three different swing lengths mm -hmm. for three different distances. Probably you want to ideally start with a, a bunch of balls, although we don't usually recommend you practice yeah. like that, but in this case probably makes a lot of sense. Well, if you practice like this, at least every ball is different because you're actually producing then a different length shot with each ball. So therefore, it might be all right, Paul, for the audience there to really practice like that. Yeah. In this, in this particular case, yes, because you want to have some sort of sense of differentiation between the different swing lengths. So that's how you control the distance. What about striking the ball well? Because a lot of people complain to us about how do you actually contact the ball perfectly? So there's, a, there's quite a lot written at the moment or videos out there as well about the angle of attack and, and things like that. this. But for the average golfer, what's really important is you get the ball before the ground. Yeah. That's right. the huge thing. Yeah. And if we take the setup, let's talk about the setup here. So I've got a little rule that the smaller the, the motion, the smaller the stance is. Yeah, absolutely. And the bigger the swing is, the more stability we need. So therefore, the stance is going to get a little wider there. So let's take a, 
a stance there for, for a pitch in. So the ball is going to be forward of, of centre, definitely. And what we like is the sternum here is over the ball. So if you were to hang a shaft here, you would see that the shaft is just forward of the golf ball. Now, that ensures, well, not doesn't ensure, nothing in golf is insured, but um, this can produce a much more shallow angle of attack as well and getting the ball first and then the divot. Yeah, and you, you, you can really feel it when you actually get in this position. And it's, it's a pretty much fail-safe thing, isn't it, to be able to go like this and then just move forwards. And you feel that the whole body, particularly if you, if you engage your lower body while you do it, mm -hmm. is over here. And I now don't feel like I can miss the, the left side of the ball. And, and all this stuff, as you said about, you know, uh, angle of attack and, and, and even, you know, how to use the wrists and all this sort of thing. Um, you want to make sure you're striking it pretty good normally before you move into all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. I mean, we, on our other videos that we've produced, we, we talk about those things because they are important. But in our minds, let's get the basics right first and then let's grow and expand our game and skill level to those skills as well. Okay, so we've got three things for you to summarise in that video. The difference between chipping and pitching, there actually isn't one really, at least technically not. The second thing is control the distance between you with your length of swing, so three different swings, three different distances, plus all your clubs. And then the third thing is using this little drill here with getting the weight to the left is that create a setup where you can strike better. So try those three things out first before you move on to all that good stuff, but definitely do that on betterminusgolf.com. You can find a whole range of videos on short game, pitching, all that sort of stuff. Delve in there, become a member, and see your game improve.